Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the fourth of 15 videos in the mobile weather app series. A link to the app website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in this series. In this video, we'll be creating a reusable API surface class that we can use in our project and in other projects as well. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notifications when new videos in the series and others are released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. We're going to need to create a function that will retrieve and decode the data from this API and create an instance of our forecast struct. If we're careful when creating this function, we can make it generic so that we can use it not only for this app that we are creating, but for any API call in any app. The question is, do I want to create a utility class or a singleton? I did some trolling of the internet and Stack Overflow and found this post. Now the difference between the two approaches are this. A singleton is usually used to create a resource intensive and one-time initialization for an instance, a database connector, login handler, and such. Whereas a utility classes that only have static functions and variables shouldn't deal with an async task and expensive resource handling like opening a database connector. It would appear to me then that the answer might be to create a singleton. Some of you may disagree, and in the past I've used a utility class too. This time, however, to change things up, I'm going to create a singleton. So in the sources folder of my playground, I'm going to create a new file called API service. And within here, I'll create a new class of the same name. To create a singleton, we create a new static property called shared, and I'll assign it an instance of the class. I'm going to start building this function for our particular situation, and we'll eventually make it generic. We'll call it getJSON, and it will have two parameters the URL string, and an escaping closure that we'll call completion. The closure will have one argument, which will be a result type, with a success being forecast, and the error just error, and I'll return void. Now, don't worry about this error that it can't find forecast. We'll fix that eventually, and I'll explain it all later. Now, the results failure associated type is a generic error, and I want to create my own error enum for this function. So above the function, create an enum called API error that conforms to the error protocol. It will have one case, and that's an error, that has an error string associated value. Now we can replace error with API error in our function parameter. In the body of our function, we need to create a URL from our string. Now, it can fail, so if it does, we'll execute the closure with a failure with the API error case with the associated value invalid URL, and then return. Now, if you're supporting multiple languages in your app, you can use a localized string instead, like this. I'll leave it up to you to put in the comment for your translator. Next, create a request from the URL. Now, with that in place, we can use another singleton method, which is the URL session shared singletons data task method, passing in the request, and for the completion, we'll just hit enter. We'll call our closure arguments data, response, and error. And before I forget, I want to add resume to make sure that this will actually execute. Now let's check to see if there's an error. If there is one, we'll execute our completion handler with a failure using our error and the errors associated value, which will be the errors localized description. 
Next, we'll check to see if the data that we get back is valid using a guard let statement. If it isn't, we'll perform another completion with another failure, being the error with our own NS localized string as the associated value. Well, now that there are no errors, the URL is OK, and we've received some data that we can decode. So let me first create a decoder. And I'll follow this with a do try catch block. In the do block, we can try to decode our data using the decoder to decode to our forecast struct from data. If that works, we can call our completion block with a success this time using the decoded data as the associated value and then return. Now finally, if it can't be decoded, we need to catch that error and we can call it decoding error and execute the completion handler one more time with a failure being the API error with the decoding error's localized description as the associated string value. Now let me fix that error. The reason is that in a playground, the sources folder is considered another module, so we can't see anything in our playground since everything in our weather app playground are internal by default. So we can solve that problem in our module by using a generic for forecast. And then when we call our function, we can pass in the type. So in our function, let's add t decodable to the function definition and replace forecast with t in both cases. This fixes the error here. But what I said before about things being internal by default works both ways. We won't be able to see this function because none of our other files in our playground can see them. We'll need to make the class, the static shared property, the enum error, and the function all public. Now, this is almost perfect, except that when we are going to run into situations where we have dates that don't conform to the decoder's default decoding strategy, or perhaps we want to use another key decoding strategy. In that case, we can be proactive here and add two more parameters to our function and assign defaults and then change them only if necessary. So before the completion handler property, add two more properties. In the first, it will be a date decoding strategy, which is of type JSON decoder date decoding strategy. And we can set the default to deferred to date. The second is key decoding strategy, which is of type JSON decoder dot key decoding strategy. And here we'll set the default to user default keys. With those in place now, we can assign those to our decoder once it has been created. Well, that's our function created. In the final video of this part one, we'll finish off the section by testing out this service to fetch and retrieve data from our Open Weather Map API. There are a few concepts covered in this video, and I've covered each one of them in greater detail in other videos. So if you're somewhat confused and want more background, I encourage you to watch these videos. I'll leave links in the descriptions below. I've got an entire series on JSON decoding and the result type and completion handlers as well.